Welcome back for our deep dive discussion into poetry. Last month we discussed lyrical poetry and the steps necessary to develop your poetry in ways that express your emotional experience while connecting with readers who might have had similar circumstances. This month we are digging into one of those specific types of lyrical poems and given how Wednesday was Valentine's Day, that particular form is called the sonnet. Sonnets became popular in the late 15th to early 16th centuries, and while there were many poets who wrote in this style, there are two names that tend to stand out as synonymous with them. William Shakespeare and Francesco Petrarca, or Petrarch, who both generated two sonnet styles still used and discussed to this very day. So let's start with their similarities. Both the Shakespearean and Petrarchan styles have a total of 14 lines, and each line has 10 syllables. And that's pretty much it as far as similarities go. So let's go Italian. <laughs> and examine the uh, Petrarchan style. Petrarch broke his sonnet into two sections. The top section included an octave, or eight-line stanza, followed by a sestet, or six-line stanza. The two stanzas were hinged by a volta, or a turn, that shifts the tone of the poem. Petrarch's rhyme scheme is as follows, A-B-B-A, A-B-B-A, followed by C-D, 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 or C-D-E, C-D-E, C-D-E. The Shakespearean sonnet also has a turn, but it happens further down in the poem. Shakespeare structured his sonnets into three quatrains, followed by a rhyming couplet. The turn comes at the start of that couplet, allowing the poem to have much more room to build before shifting the tone. Old Billy also played around with more rhyming than Petrarch did. While Petrarch only used five rhyming sounds, Shakespeare actually used seven. Seven! Seven! <laughs> seven! 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 Shakespeare used the following rhyme scheme. A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. Let's take a look at another key feature of a sonnet, which is the theme. Most sonnets invoke strong emotion, usually love. But you can also express heartbreak, sorrow, betrayal, or even decisiveness. Sure, it's not an emotion, but you can use the poem to express a mission statement of sorts. Here's an example of a Shakespearean-style sonnet from my own book, The Lover, The Fighter, and The Philosopher. 9. I walk the path between light and dark, keen to the knowledge that a simple choice can push me, shoving me to either side clean in light or slick oiled in shadow. This man I can be is robed simply, like a true nomad, following the path of the force that created me and all things. My clue to this is that I merely walk a course that could be swayed to light or to dark. I am hoping that as I move in life, I will make a difference. But now hark, it is time to pathwalk, not dark but light. I made my choice, and light will be my deed, as now and forever Jedi I be. So here are seven <laughs> steps for writing your sonnet. Step one, choose a theme or problem that you want to address in your poem. You can explore universal elements like love, war, mortality, uh, change, hardship, or even religion. Maybe you're trying to answer a larger question, and this is what is used in Petrarch's style, where the first eight lines establish a problem and the last six propose an answer. Whichever it is, personalize it and make it important to you. Step two, pick a type of sonnet. As we've discussed, there are just the two types, Petrarchan and Shakespearean. Find the structure that works best for you, Make sure you familiarize yourself with it so that you don't leave anything, like the syllable count, the rhyme scheme, or the number of lines, undone. Personally, I'm a fan of the Shakespearean sonnet. It's always resonated with me. Step 3. Write in iambic pentameter. We talked about iambic syllables last month. The first syllable in the pairing should be short or unstressed, while the second syllable in the pairing should be long or stressed. The pentameter means uh, five pairings, of this pattern for a total of 10 syllables, as mentioned earlier. Step 4. Organize your stanzas. You need to know the terms for the types of stanzas that you're using based on the type of sonnet that you're writing. Shakespearean will have three quatrains followed by a couplet, but a Petrarchan sonnet will have an octave 
followed by a sestet, step five. Make sure you follow the rhyme scheme. I've already broken down this rhyme scheme earlier in the segment, so just make sure you have it written down. If you need to research it, there is an article linked in the video description detailing the same steps, including a listing for the rhyme scheme. Step six, incorporate a volta, which in Italian means turn. You see this in both styles, and while typically it happens after line eight in the Petrarchan, I prefer to save it for lines 13 and 14 when I write the couplet in the Shakespearean style. Lastly, step seven. Use poetic devices such as imagery and other figurative language like metaphors and similes, personification, alliteration, as well as strong word choices. A consolidation of syllables is a great practice for saying more with less. I highly recommend you read sonnets regularly to get a feel for them. The more you read them, the more understanding you'll gain and you'll get a better sense for the flow and structure. So here is this month's writing prompt. Write a sonnet in the style of your choosing. Make sure to follow the conventional structure and pick a strong emotion that you want to explore. Given the fact that we celebrate Valentine's Day in February, maybe a lovely romantic sonnet would do the trick. Even if you aren't romantically involved with someone, you can still write out a decent poem if you allow yourself the opportunity to express that emotion. Once you have it written, share it in the comments section, send it to me on Instagram or x at gkj underscore publishing, or you can email me a copy at gkjpublishing at gmail.com.